Dear members of the committee, uh, dear friends, colleagues, uh, please, um, uh, I would ask you to uh, take your place and we will start uh, our uh, small uh, site event uh, presentation. Uh, I am pleased to welcome you all on behalf of the official delegation of the Russian Federation and the presentation organized by Russian Minister of Culture on the occasion of the 25th anniversary of first national cultural monuments inscriptions on UNESCO World Heritage Site list. Today we celebrate with you major events of the year of 1990 that is already far away from us. Let us recall that this was the year of the radical uh, restructuring of the internal system of administration and management and the subsequent disintegration of USSR. The year was a harbinger of a severe socio-economic and political crisis and the people of our country had to pass through its ordeal. In these most difficult circumstances, Soviet specialists, in cooperation with UNESCO, carried out a profound research and preparatory work that resulted into the inscription of the first three Russian culture monuments on UNESCO World Heritage List. It is no coincidence that the most symbolic and globally recognized Russian sites were selected, the Moscow Kremlin, the historical center of St. Petersburg, and the architectural ensemble of Kiji. For our multinational country and for our other people, these monuments are inextricably linked to its history, greatness, unique culture, code, and spiritual heritage. These three major cultural and spiritual sources, the Kremlin, St. Petersburg, and Kiji, possess profound uh, unifying and humanistic capacities, both within the country and beyond it, in the era Asian and global spaces. All of them are indisputable examples of monuments with an outstanding universal value for mankind. I'm pleased to know that the 25th anniversary of the inscription of our sites by the World Heritage Committee coincides with other anniversary of major world historic events. Key among them are the 70th anniversary of UNESCO and the 70th anniversary of the great victory over Nazism. This year also marks the 25th anniversary of the beginning of the process of the final reunification of Germany the friendly and welcoming host country of committee's current session. In this crossroad of historic dates and events, we can clearly see certain symbolism that is very important today, as well as the evidence of UNESCO unique mission and global role. This year also marks the 15th anniversary of the inscription of the Kazan Kremlin of the World Heritage List. This being so, allow me to welcome the members of our delegation from Tatarstan. Uh, moreover, the Jubilees are celebrated today by several other Russian sites, the Virgin Komi Forests, the Ferapontov Monastery, and the Kuronian Spit, Split, Yaroslavl and the Struve Arch, and the, finally, the Putarana Plateau. The recognition of the above-mentioned Russian sites by UNESCO paved the way for Russia's active participation in the protection of world heritage and highlighted the global value of its monuments. It also ensured, in collaboration with international experts, a rigorous conservation of our sites that, together with the whole of the country, were passing through a crucial period in its development. In this context, I would like once again to express my deepest appreciation to UNESCO experts and Russian representatives present here today for their invaluable contribution to the protection of these and many other Russian monuments. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I would like to pass the floor to the representative uh, of Ministry of Culture uh, the Chief of the Department of Cultural Heritage State Protection of Russian Minister of Culture, Vladimir Anatolyevich Tsvitnov. Please, floor is yours. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, being a representative of Russian Minister of Culture, I am happy to welcome you 
at the presentation devoted to the 21st anniversary of the first Russian sites on the World Heritage List. Beginning, I would like to briefly cover the history of the issue. In 1988, Russia completed the procedure necessary to join the World Heritage Convention, and two years later, it was able to submit three nominations to the World Heritage Committee, the Historical Center of St. Petersburg, the Kizhipogost, and the Moscow Kremlin. We received the unconditional support of the committee. The sites were included in the World Heritage List in 1990 and put forward the highest standard of the rest of the Russian nomination, 13 cultural and 10 natural ones, listed in the following years. For example, Kazan Kremlin and Asian Bulgar. The historical center of St. Petersburg and related groups of the monuments is the nomination unrepresented in complexity and the number of components. The site's area is twice larger than Luxembourg is. It consists of 37 components and other 130 elements. Includes the palace and parks, memorial objects connected with the blockade of Leningrad, natural landscape, forts, historical road, and a lot of monuments from different age. The Kizhipogost and the Moscow Kremlin are the ensembles, which are smaller but not less important in terms of history. St. Petersburg is the imperial capital. Moscow, with its heart, the Moscow Kremlin, is the capital of Russian Tsars and Soviet leaders. The Kizhipogost is a kind of peasant capital, the center of the local government for the peasant communities of the Onega region. My colleagues will tell more details about their unique object, reflecting the different stage of our country's life in their speeches. And I would like to say a few words about the problems related to World Heritage Sites the Russian Minister of Culture has to deal with. Firstly, it is the state protection. The majority of the Russian world cultural heritage has the highest protection status under the Russian legislation. Any work on their territory shall be carried out only with permission and under the supervision of the Russian Minister of Culture. Secondly, the preservation. The Russian Minister of Culture allocates the significant fund to rest of the world heritage site. In 2040 to 2050, over 10 million euros we allocate to rest of a number of the world heritage site. The restoration work is carried out in accordance with the internationally accept principles, including enshrined we in the Venice Charter. Thirdly, it is a legislative provision. The presentative of law ensuring the Convention of the Operation Guidelines is very important for the effective operation. In, 40, in 2040 to 2050, Russian Minister of Culture prepared a new version of the Russian law on the cultural heritage where such things as management plan, heritage impact assessment, buffer zone are enshrined. Fourthly, it is coordination. The Russian Minister of Culture is the national focal point for the world cultural heritage and provides the information and interaction of all stakeholders in solving the issue related to the implementation of UNESCO recommendations and requirements. The Russian Minister of Culture also coordinates the preparation of new nomination and relates UNESCO document into Russia. The operation guidelines and other materials in Russia are available on the website of the Minister of Culture. 25 years later, since the moment 
of including the first Russian seeds, sites in the World Heritage List. We can say that Russia com continue to pay great attention to the work of the World Heritage Convention and seek to raise awareness and provide the availability of the monuments for a wide range of people interested in your history and culture. So, at the St. Petersburg International Cultural Forum on 14 to 17 December 2015, the exhibition dedicated to the 21st anniversary of the first Russian sites in the World Heritage List will be held. The ghosts of the exhibition uh, will see the multimedia installation, photograph of St. Petersburg, Moscow Kremlin, and the Kijipo ghost. I would like to take this opportunity to invite all of you to visit of this exhibition. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much. And now I would like to give uh, the floor to Mr. Sergei Makarov, head of the Heritage Protection Committee at the administration of St. Petersburg. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to have this opportunity to speak to you here today. All of us gathered here are united by our partial attitude to heritage, to landmarks, that are the bearer of historical memory, a kind of cultural genetic code uniting all of the humankind. Let me welcome you on behalf of the government of St. Petersburg, the city that became the first Russian site inscribed to the World Heritage List. St. Petersburg, recognized as one of the most beautiful cities in the world, constitutes a unique phenomenon in the, in the history of culture. Founded by the will of Emperor Peter the Great in the swampy delta of the Neva River, because of its strategic location, the new city seemed unsuitable for habitation. Yet it was declared the capital of the Russian Empire just a decade after its foundation. The majority of large cities and the world took shape over time, gradually growing in the size around the original historical nucleus, and this process took centuries. St. Petersburg had no such core. Development of the area began at once and proceeded simultaneously at various points of the huge amphitheater formed by the coastal terraces of the, of the ancient, ancient sea. Palaces appeared as did state establishments, living quarters, barracks, country residences, shipyards, factories, and fortification. But Peter I did not stop there. He built many roads and waterways, tying all these elements together and forming a planning framework for the future agglomeration. The compositional foundation of the city plan created during the lifetime of Peter the Great, did not change significantly during the subsequent development of the city and was brought to relative completion through the efforts of several generations of architects. The urban fabric of St. Petersburg is saturated with architectural ensembles. These ensembles, flowing from one into another and grouped into larger ensemble formation, create a complex multi-level system. As they move around the city from one organized space to another, city guests start perceiving the whole city as a single ensemble, proportional for the human experience and processing and great power of artistic influence. The city's regular planet structure began forming as early as during the reign of Peter the Great, as so did the famous Petersburg Triaxiality. Nevsky Prospect became the key city thoroughfare, intersecting the city from east to west. During the reign of Empresses Anna Ioannovna, Elizabeth Petrovna, and Catherine the Great, the cityscape of St. Petersburg became a monumental seat of luxury, 
attaining international recognition as the Venice of the North. The splendid design of city buildings by architects Rostrelli, Rinaldi, Quarenghi, Cameron, and Valen de la Motte revealed luxurious places, monasteries, and imperial and princely suburban residences in Peterhof, Oranienbaum, Tsarskoe Selo, Pavlovsk, and Gatchina, which were being built at the same time at the new city. During the reign of Empress Elizabeth, the old country residences of Peter the Great were rebuilt and improved. Rastrelius genius helped turn humble palaces reminiscent of small home of Dutch and German bourgeoisie into splendid palaces that are impressive with their Baroque style and radiant gilding. Peterhof, Strelna, and Oranienbaum are considered among the best of palace and park ensembles in Russia. The palace and park ensemble of Peterhof, Pushkin, Pavlovsk, and Gatchina, like many buildings and structures in the city itself, were reduced to rubble during the Second World War. The works on the preservation of the monuments were a major feat during the siege of Leningrad. In these terrible years, the famous Leningrad School of Restoration was born, which has recently celebrated its 70th anniversary. Restoration project, which began as early as in 1944, restored Leningrad, its suburban palaces and parks to their pre-war splendor in a short time. St. Petersburg has traditionally served as a connecting link between Russia and the European cultural space. In the 18th century, the St. Pe Petersburg became the home for the Academy of Sciences, the University, the Academy of Arts, the School of Th Theater and Dance, and the first museums in Russia, Kunstkammer and the Hermitage. These developments turned the new capital into major centers of Russia's culture and science. It was here that literature and music blossomed and where Pushkin, Dostoevsky, Tchaikovsky, Akhmatova, and Shostakovich created their art. The 20th century was a time of turmoil for St. Petersburg. It was here that all Russian revolutions had started. The defense of Leningrad during Second World War became a part of world history as an example of unrevealed heroism and indomitable fortitude. Famine and cold, shelling and bombardments had claimed around a million lives during the year of siege. In 1913, the development of the historical center of St. Petersburg was practica practically halted. The First World War and the ensuing revolutions and the Civil War put an end to all construction in the city. In 1918, the country's capital was moved to Moscow. In the post-revolutionary period, new construction developed mostly in the outskirts of the city, but the historical center did not undergo any substantial changes. In St. Petersburg today, a set of measures is being successfully implemented that is aimed at conserving cultural heritage properties in their historical environment, which together constitute the basis of, of world heritage site. A system of protection zones for cultural heritage properties has been in formation since 1988. This work has been continuing interruptedly ever since. By 2009, the comprehensive system of protection zones in St. Petersburg took its final shape, taking into account the boundaries on the World Heritage Site. A corresponding law was passed which formalized the requirements for conserving not only individual, mon individual monuments, but the surrounding historical environment as well. Last year, in collaboration with the World Heritage Center and ECOMOS, the composition and boundaries of the World Heritage Site were clarified. These materials were approved by decisions of recent session of the World Heritage Committee. Last year, 
a number of provisions for perfecting protection zones were amended above all for the purpose of preserving individual historic buildings that are not cultural heritage properties. Requirements for placing advertising constructions were made more stringent. The height limit for construction near the city's center was lowered to 33 meters. Since last year, in order to ensure comprehensive protection measures for the city skyline as well as its planning structure, work has been underway on the limitation of boundaries of the historical settlement and the objects under protection, the, for example, the elements making up the historic urban environment. In 2014, work of improving the requirement for protection zone regimes was started. The goal is to prepare block by block requirement for the city center with full details within the boundaries on the main component of the World Heritage Site, the historic center of St. Petersburg. The need for this works has reflected in the decision of the last session of the World Heritage Com Committee. The management system for the World Heritage Site is being continuously improved. In 20 of October last year, an agreement on cooperation was signed between the Ministry of Culture of Russian Federation, Government of St. Petersburg, and the Government of Leningrad Region. It covered the issues related to conservation, management, and promotion of the historic center of St. Petersburg and related groups of monument. Over the past several years, the World Heritage Committee has recommended the, de uh, the development of a comprehensive management framework for the entire inscribed property. An important step in this direction was the creation of the Coordination Council with the participation of the Ministry of Culture and Heritage Conservation Authorities of St. Petersburg and Leningrad region. Among the tasks of the Council is ensuring interaction between executive authorities of St. Petersburg and Leningrad region in the process of preparing and managing the site management plan. Today, taking into account the experience gained over the previous decades in preserving the cultural heritage as well as those mistakes which were, for, uh, we, uh, were fortunately avoided, City of St. Petersburg is working systematically to improve its conservation system and involve social organization, the Legislative Assembly of St. Petersburg and experts in the field of urban planning and cultural history into this work. I'm very grateful to the World Heritage Center, ECOMOS, and the World Heritage Committee for many years of cooperation aimed at preserving and supporting the outstanding universal value of the site historic center of St. Petersburg and related groups of monuments. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, and now I would like to give the floor to Madame Olga Titova, Deputy Director of the Kije Open Air Museum. Dear colleagues, it's my honor to welcome you on behalf of the Kije Museum. The Kiji Museum is the biggest open-air museum in Russia that preserves national culture, architecture, and landscape. There are more than 80 buildings on the museum territory, including old chapels, farmers' houses, and household buildings. The museum manages World Heritage Site Kiji Pagost of the 18th and 19th century. 25 years ago, the Kiji Pagost was inscribed on the World Heritage List of UNESCO by three criteria, one, four, and five. First criterion determines the Kiji Pagos architecture ensemble as the eighth wonder of the world. Perfectly proportional buildings are constructed in ideal harmony with the landscape. The Kiji Pagos was built and still stands on Kiji Island, which is a part of the island archipelago in Lake Aninga. The architectural ensemble of the Kiji Pagos is a traditional church complex of the Russian North. It includes the Sama Church of the Transfiguration, the Winter Church of the Intercession, and the Bell Tower. The complex is surrounded by the fence. Inside, on the Pagos territory, there is an old cemetery. Professionalism of carpenters who built the Pagos is expressed in their amazing ability to create complex architectural forms in perfect harmony with nature. 
and despite their big size, the churches look light and airy. In 2014, the Transfiguration Church celebrated its 300th anniversary. The Church of the Transfiguration is a unique monument. There is nothing like it in the Russian or wood wooden architecture. Locals think it's real wonder. They made up a legend that it had been built without any single nail by Carpenter Nestor, who walked alone and only used his axe. The Kija architectural ensemble is the last one left in Russia that includes two wooden multi-domed churches. The Church of the Transfiguration is covered by 22 wooden domes. The Church of the Intercession is decorated with a crown of eight domes around one big dome. The domes of the churches and the bell tower are covered with aspen shingles. All domes are positioned in a special way to complement each other and to create beautiful views from all sides. The fourth criterion determines the Kija architecture ensemble as a typical one for the northwest of Russia. The Kija Pagos was not only a religious, but also a social and administrative center of peasant life. Religious services were held in the churches of the Kija Pagos, in the Transfiguration Church in summertime and in the Intercession Church in winter. Bell ringing, which can be heard from many kilometers away, gathered local people for the services. Services in the Intercession Church are held again after the long break during the Soviet time. The churches of the Kija Island has always been both the spiritual center and the symbol of unity of a big village community. The Kija Pagos was the main gathering place for peasants from surrounding areas. This was the place where people came to celebrate church holidays, weddings, and christenings. Here, they collectively made important decisions on day-to-day -day issues of nearby villages. The main activities of the local people were agriculture, animal breeding, and fishing. The main means of transportation in summer was the boat. Local people learned how to sew special boats, which were both steady and easy to maneuver. They allowed locals navigating in rough Lake Aniga waters. The Kija Museum pays a lot of attention to preserving the ancient traditions. Museum specialists restore the technologies of shipbuilding, land cultivating, and the creative of traditional costumes and decorations. The Kija Pagost united the whole district as an administrative center. Numerous villages were situated on picturesque shores of the surrounding islands. Ancient wooden houses and chapels are still preserved in local old villages. Structure of the villages and the landscape reflecting the traditional agriculture system have been preserved to the modern day. Considering the importance of the surrounding area for preservation of the World Heritage Site, a buffer zone was set up. The buffer zone covers the most picturesque parts of the Kija archipelago, including Kija Island. The fifth criterion determines the Kija architectural ensemble as an example of traditional wooden architecture of the Russian North and skills of local carpenters. Apart from the architectural ensemble, the museum exhibition includes farmer houses and other buildings. Beautiful examples of the village architecture demonstrate skills of carpenters and patterns of everyday life of villages of the 19th century. Both churches and houses are decorated with carved wooden elements. They combine symbols of pagan and orthodox cultures, which coexisted and complemented each other in the minds of peasants. Today, carpenters and restorers put a lot of efforts into preservation of traditional crafts, tools, and techniques. Using traditional methods, they make wooden elements for restoration of churches and houses by hand. The Church of the Transfiguration is being restored with the use of traditional methods of harvesting, processing, and preparation of wood. In order to ensure efficient management of the World Heritage Site, according to the UNESCO recommendations, the museum work out a management plan. The major principles in the management plan development was involvement of all stakeholders, including local residents. In 2003, the Museum started restoration of the Church of the Transfiguration. The goal of the restoration is the reconstruction of the architectural look of the monument and the conservation of historic material to the utmost together with ensuring its stability and steadiness. A special lifting technology is used for restoration. It was designed considering the complicated construction of the church. Each element 
that had been restored is thoroughly registered. It was recommended by the expert to disseminate the unique experience of restoration of the Transfiguration Church. It could be a valuable helping hand in the conservation of wooden architecture monuments in Russia and abroad. To this end, the museum established training center for conservation of wooden architecture monuments. This year, in cooperation with Petrozovsk State University, the museum applied for establishing a UNESCO chair for study and conservation of wooden architecture. Every year, experts from ICOMOS and UNESCO visit Kiji Island to monitor the progress of the restoration. At present, the Kiji Museum needs consultations regarding the project of reinforcement of the church structure. For this purpose, the museum invited the UNESCO experts in September this year to organize the following steps in accordance with their advice. The Kiji Pagost has always been the center of religious and social life of this area and the purpose of the museum is to keep and restore this role. Therefore, in 2013, the Kiji Museum elaborated the development concept. It suggests sustainable development of the area considering its historic and cultural potential. It is done in accordance with the UNESCO requirements. Social and economic well-being of an area is a key condition for preservation of a world heritage site and historical authenticity. Considering rich cultural heritage and beautiful nature, one of the few ways for the development of the area is promotion of different forms of cultural and environmental tourism. For development of touristic services, the museum collaborates closely with local inhabitants. For example, with the owners of local guest houses situated around the Kiji Island. Kiji is one of the most beautiful places of the Russian North. The unique nature of the island is one of its main treasures, carefully preserved by specialists of the Kiji Museum. Kiji is a very popular museum, not only for Russian visitors, but for foreign tourists as well. In winter and in summer, the museum offers sightseeing tools, theme excursions, and educational programs for visitors of all ages from all over the world. Traditionally, all the issues related to constructions or repairs of the churches were discussed at local residence meetings. At present, this tradition has been preserved. Same as before, headmen of local villages gathered in the church of the, to discuss community problems. Also, the public council has been established for discussion of their issues related to management, development, and conservation of the World Heritage Site and the historic landscape. Members of the public council are representatives of local communities, public organizations, authorities, church, and business. The Kiju Museum is a modern and dynamical development museum that seeks to comply with international law in the field of cultural heritage management and conservation. Every effort of the museum is aimed at conservation of the outstanding universal value and particular historic, cultural, natural, environmental on the site. We express our gratitude to UNESCO and the CAMOS for active assistance in the world cultural heritage conservation and invite you to visit the gem of the Russian North, the Kiji Pagost. Thank you very much. And now uh, I would like to give the floor to Tatiana Krasininikova, head of Department for Monuments Protection and the Moscow Kremlin Museum. Please, floor is yours. Thank you. The ensemble of the Moscow Kremlin and Red Square is a masterpiece of human creative genius and the main symbol of Russia. It took more than 500 years to form, reflecting the history of national architecture, as well as relationship with the European cultural tradition. Moscow Kremlin was the residence of the great princess, then later the Tsar's residence. Currently, it is the seat of, of the president of the Russian Federation. The Moscow Kremlin is situated on the left bank of the Moscow River, on the Boravitsky Hill. Kremlin walls have the shape of an, an irregular triangle and surround an area of 27 hectares. The southern wall facing the Moscow River, northwestern the Alexander Garden, the eastern the Red Square. According to the 15th century chronicle, the first wooden fortress was erected here in 1156. 
In the second half of the 14th century, a young Moscow prince Dmitri, later to be nicknamed Donskoy, decided to build a new stone fortress. It took, it took only one year to erect walls and towers of white stone. The territory of the fortress had been expanded northeastward almost up to the present day size, since the Moscow was to be called the White Stone City. The present day walls and towers of, of the Kremlin were built in the late 15th century. Prince Ivan III, who was nicknamed the Great, invited the architects from the north of Italy to perform the renovation work. The construction project got started in 1485. The first tower, Tainitskaya, was erected under the supervision of Italian architect Anton Friesen. By 1495, the new walls and towers had been completed. More than 100 of Italian craftsmen and architects had been working in the Moscow Kremlin. In the 17th century, the beautiful stone marquees on top of the Kremlin's towers were built. They changed considerably the outlook of the medieval citadel. Aristotle Ferravanti from Bologna uh, built in uh, 1479 the Assumption Cathedral, the greatest in the Kremlin. In 1487, a Grand Prince Palace construction was started by Mark Friesen and Pietro Antonio Salari. The facetted chamber is the only part of the palace that survived to our days. In 1508, the greatest Moscow bell tower was erected under the supervision of Bonfriesen. This bell tower uh, of about 60 meters high was named Ivan the Great. The Archangel Cathedral was erected at the same time. The Italian architect, who was known in Russia under the name of Alivis Novi, was specially invited to Moscow from Venice to supervise the construction project. From the outside, uh, the Archangel Cathedral looks very much like a Venetian palazzo. Also well-recognizable elements of Renaissance architecture were used in its decoration. Close to the Spaska Tower on Red Square southern side, you can see the magnificent Pakrovsky Cathedral on the moat. It was erected on Tsar Ivan the Terrible Order in the mid-16th century to commemorate the taking of Kazan and the conquest of the Astrakhan Khanate. In the 18th-19th century, the Arsenal, the Senate, the Grand Kremlin Palace were built in the Kremlin. In 1929, according to the decree of the Soviet government, some buildings among them, the Ascension Nunnery and the Chudov Monastery, were destroyed. At the place of the two monasteries, Kremlin Military School was built. In 1990, the architectural complex of the Moscow Kremlin and the Red Square was included uh, to the list of the World Heritage of UNESCO. One of the most important aspects of the Kremlin Museum's activity is the preservation of the unique architectural monuments. At the restoration works, uh, all the restoration works are preceded with a pre-project study, including archival, architectural, and field studies. Among the recent restoration projects made by the Kremlin Museums, we should mention the restoration of the Annunciation Cathedral. During this century, it was the Moscow Great Princess and Tsar's home church. The most interesting discoveries were made in the underground part of the cathedral. Here, the lower part of the walls and foundation of the church of 1416 were found. More than 100 white stone blocks with the carved ornamentation of fragment of the mural painting on the surface were found under an ocean back steps. Fragments of monumental painting dates to the beginning of 15th century and uh, were attributed by experts as painting of Rublev's circle. The Patriarch's Palace with the Cathedral Church of the Twelve Apostles is the most interesting example of civil architecture in the mid-17th century in the Kremlin. Built by order of Patriarch Nikon, the palace was rebuilt many times. Restoration of uh, of the one pillar chamber uh, in the ground floor of the palace begin in 2003. After completion of the restoration, the chamber was opened as an exhibition hall of the museum. Ivan the Great Bell Tower was opened to the public in 2005. In the interior of a bell tower remained unique white stone spiral staircases, initial cornices, and white stone rosette. 
Now in the bell tower, uh, there is the exposition dedicated to the centuries old history of development of the Moscow Kremlin <coughs> architectural complex. Here our guests can see the original architectural fragments of ancient buildings that were destroyed, the ancient Kremlin plans and images. The Archangel Cathedral, Russia's first state necropolis, is one of the most original monuments of the Cathedral Square. The most interesting architectural details of the Archangel Cathedral are certainly the white stone Renaissance portals. Unfortunately, they were heavily destroyed due to the high salination and bad ecology in general. In 2005, works on the restoration of unique portals of the cathedral began and the eye are still going on. White stone details were desalted and the lost carving was reconstructed. The restoration works in the south annex of the Archangel Cathedral began in 2008. Interfloor overlappings, metal stairs and walls built in the Soviet period were dismantled. Now we can see again the watered roof structures copper roof and um, uh, previous form of windows openings. At the north and east walls of the south annex, brickwork of the 15th century is demonstrated with fragments of rebuilt of uh, 17, 18 centuries. This year is going on the restoration of the Assumption Cathedral. The facades of, of the church of the deposition of the robe of the Holy Virgin were restored in uh, 2014. The Moscow Kremlin and Red Square, a unique artistic ensemble, a masterpiece of many generations of outstanding artists. Now there is a world famous museum which is visited annually by more than two million guests. Uh, thank you for your attention and welcome to the museum. Thank you very much. And uh, now I would like to propose you a very short uh, film. And uh, technicians, I would uh, ask you to screen this film. The historical center of St. Petersburg, the Moscow Kremlin, and the Kiji Church Ensemble are the architectural symbols of Russia. These unique objects are an embodiment of Russian culture, of its variety and unity, its might and its subtlety, its unique character and coherence with tradition. Each of them is recognized as a masterpiece of human creative genius. They were the very first Russian objects added to the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1990. St. Petersburg was the capital of the Russian Empire. It's the only place of its kind and an ideal realization of the European grid plan town concept. Surrounded as it is by palace and park ensemble, placed in perfect harmony with the natural landscape. A city built according to a careful plan and in a short time, as well as in difficult climate conditions. Bogginess, a permanent flood threat, cold and moist weather, has turned into a visual embodiment of the historical period governed by Tsar Peter the Great. It was built as the capital of a new state, as a model city for the renovated Russia. St. Petersburg played a key part in the country's modernization in the 18th century. Here were placed the residences of the Russian emperors, the newly established Academy of Science, Academy of Fine Arts, the largest museum in Russia, the Hermitage Museum, as well as the first Russian railway line that was laid between St. Petersburg and Saskia Silo. The cultural landscape of St. Petersburg and its surroundings is unique. Different historical periods and different styles of architecture, ranging from Baroque and Classicism to Modernism and Constructivism, provide the city and its suburbs with great visual diversity. Nevertheless, 
the historical appearance of the city center of Russia's northern capital remains intact and authentic. Its primary virtue is in the harmony between nature and architecture. The city has witnessed and participated in many great and tragic historical events, such as the revolutions of February and October 1917, and the heroic fortitude during World War II in the Leningrad blockade, which took nearly a million lives. Having gone through the unprecedented challenges of the 20th century, the city remains symbolic and fundamental to Russian culture, education and science. St. Petersburg has been an inspiration to great Russian scientists, writers, musicians and performing artists. The Moscow Kremlin and Red Square constitute the center of Moscow, the old capital of the Moscovite princes, the Russian Tsars, the Soviet government, now the president's residence. Behind the Kremlin walls there is a unique range of architectural masterpieces and treasures of art from different times. There are great cathedrals, the Cathedral of the Annunciation, the Cathedral of the Assumption, the Archangel Michael Cathedral, the bell tower of Ivan the Great. There are gorgeous palaces, the Grand Kremlin Palace, the Terem Palace, the Palace of Facets. Among the famous buildings, there's St. Basil's Cathedral, situated in Red Square. Its harmonious look, with the visually stunning, colorful domes, its effect of verticality, and the old galleries, make it one of the most recognized architectural objects in the world. The Kremlin, together with its circle of walls, enriched with the five gates and 29 towers, resembles what used to be the old wooden Grad, established by Russian Prince Yuri Dolgoruki, approximately in the year 1156, on top of a hill next to the Moskva River. Later, partially rebuilt in white limestone by Prince Dmitry Donskoy, and once again by Grand Prince Ivan III, the Moscow Kremlin became a striking example of a defensive installation that can be found at the core of many old Russian towns. The Moscow Kremlin became the birthplace of various new forms of Russian architecture. The numerous cathedrals, towers and chambers are heavily influenced by the Italian Renaissance. This can be seen in the features of the Cathedral of the Assumption, built by the architect named Fioravanti, and in the features of the Palace of Facets. In the same period, using the methods of Milano engineering, the Kremlin Towers were built by the architect Zolari. Most of all, the Renaissance reflected upon the classical capitals of the Archangel Michael Cathedral, built at a time when Moscow is the third Rome idea turned official. Beginning in the 13th century, the Kremlin became the arena for the most significant events in Russian history. Here, the Tsars were crowned, planned their military campaigns, held courts, issued edicts, and eventually passed away. In the 20th century, Moscow again became the capital of Russia, instead of St. Petersburg. Here, the Soviet government was situated. Here, the key political figures of the USSR were buried. On Red Square, one can see Lenin's mausoleum. Currently, the Moscow Kremlin, as before, is the very center of Russia's political administration and home to the residency of the president. Nevertheless, many of the Kremlin buildings are open to visitors. Many people in Russia consider the Kiji Pagost to be the eighth wonder of the world, as it is an entirely unique artistic achievement of Russian wooden architecture. The Kiji Church Ensemble, as well as the other buildings on the Kiji Island, are exceptional examples of the carpentry tradition of the Russian North. Russian carpenters, renowned most of all for medieval Novgorod, reached the highest point of their artistic craft when they built the two magnificent churches with multiple domes and a bell tower next to each other. The unusually designed, ideally proportioned wooden buildings beautifully organize the island's environment and fit harmoniously with the surrounding landscape. 
The Pagost was the central administrative unit of Karelia in the 13th to 14th centuries. The term Pagost had two meanings. The word was used to describe the place where the churches were built, along with a graveyard, but it was also the name for the administrative district, a united group of villages. The churches were built right into the center of the district. The Kiji Pagost, composed of the summer Transfiguration Church and the winter Intercession Church, is a striking example of the building group typical for a sparsely populated region of medieval Orthodox settlements. In such settlements, preachers were confronted with the challenge of working across the widespread Christian communities in tough climatic conditions. The traditions of the Russian peasants' self-government, their carpentry craft and their Christian culture were partially lost in Soviet times. Today, with the help of the museum preservation area Kiji, along with the proactive attitude of the local people, they're being restored. Twenty-five years is a quarter of a century. One might say that it's a brief period for buildings with many centuries of history behind them. However, each of them requires care and protection. In these 25 years, under the auspices of UNESCO, on numerous occasions, extraordinary Russian memorials were carefully restored using state-of-the-art technologies. The museums of St. Petersburg and of the Moscow Kremlin are among the busiest in the world while Kiji has often been awarded top places among international restoration competitions. In December 2015, an exhibition will open in St. Petersburg, devoted to the history of various buildings, as well as the activity aimed at their preservation and popularization. Thank you very much. Our presentation came to the end. I would like to, uh, to thank representatives of um, Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Kiji, and uh, all of you being here with us. Thank you very much.